Hi guys, I'm Rahul from Simply Learn and today I'm going to tell you how you can become a machine learning engineer. But before we begin, let me tell you what a machine learning engineer actually does. A machine learning engineer creates and maintains machine learning solutions to solve business problems. They constantly tweak and optimize the solutions for maximum performance and scalability. They solve business problems like reducing customer churn, running targeted marketing campaigns, and improving product experience. They also help with predicting whether a particular hypothesis will be profitable in the future. They contribute to cutting edge research in AI and machine learning. Now, before you can start off on your journey to becoming a machine learning engineer, there's a certain number of steps that you need to follow. On this learning path, your first step is to improve your math skills. Mathematics plays a very important role in helping you understand how machine learning and its algorithms work. Among the many concepts that you need to understand, three of the most important ones are probability and statistics, linear algebra, and calculus. Now, let's have a detailed look at probability and statistics. Firstly, you have the Bayes theorem. This is used in the naive Bayes algorithm to help categorize your data. Then, we have probability distribution. This helps you determine how frequently a particular event will take place. For example, you can determine what your premium for your insurance will be based on the probability distribution of expenditure pertaining to insurance claims. You must also learn how sampling and hypothesis testing works. Now, let's look at linear algebra. Now, linear algebra has two main concepts, matrices and vectors. They both use widely in machine learning. Now, matrices are used for image recognition where the entire image that you're using is already in the form of a matrix. You need to be able to work with matrices, perform simple operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, inverse, transpose, and so on. Now, the recommended systems that you see in applications like Netflix or Amazon actually work on vectors. This vector is the customer behavior vectors and they use distance measures. Now, let's have a closer look at calculus. You have differential calculus and integral calculus. Now, these help in determining the probability of events. For example, in finding the posterior probability in a naive based model. In your next step to becoming a machine learning engineer, you need to develop good programming skills. And let me tell you, there are a huge number of options from which you can choose. There's Python, there's C, there's C Sharp, there's Java, and so much more. Now here's a graph of the job postings from 2014 to 2017. And you can see that there are two languages that dominate since 2015, Python and R. Now these are one of the most wanted languages when it comes to machine learning engineers. These are closely followed by JavaScript and C. Hence, we would like to recommend that you learn Python and R as they are the best options when it comes to coding in machine learning algorithms. So here are a few things that you need to know about Python and R. Python is an object-oriented language, which means their main emphasis is on the object. R is a functional language, which means their emphasis is on creating and manipulating functions. Python relies on its many packages and R is slightly faster than Python because it has inbuilt packages. Now, Python is generic and is suitable if you need to integrate it with any other software. R works a little more closer with statistical analysis. Your next step is to get yourself some data engineering skills. Now, these skills are important as they help you analyze and process your data as soon as you get it. Now, there are three major steps when it comes to data engineering. Firstly, there's data pre-processing. Now, these refer to all the steps that you need to perform before data can be processed by the machine learning algorithm. You have cleaning, parsing, correcting, and consolidating the data. Then you have ETL or extract, transform, and load. You need to know how data can be extracted from the internet or a local server. You need to know how to transform the data. For example, not all formats of data would be accepted by the program. So you need to convert the data into a format that is accepted by the program. Then you need to know how the data is loaded into your program. The final step is to have knowledge about database management softwares or DBMS. You need to be well versed with MySQL, the Oracle database and NoSQL. Your next step is to learn machine learning algorithms. Now among all the machine learning algorithms that you can see on screen, you can divide them into two different categories. Ones that fall under supervised machine learning and the others that fall under unsupervised machine learning. Even after such a division, you can further subdivide them into classification and regression algorithms. Now, all algorithms except linear regression fall under the category of classification, which is used to determine whether a particular data falls into a particular category. On the other hand, you have linear regression that falls under regression algorithms. This is used to predict a particular value. Then you have k-means clustering and hierarchical clustering. Now, these fall under the category of clustering. This is used to group data into clusters based on certain similar attributes. 
then you have the a priori algorithm that falls under the concept of association. Association is used to determine patterns of association among variables in large data sets. So now that you know about these algorithms, let me tell you where you can learn about them. Let's take a look at our Simply Learn channel and let's go to playlists. And on this, we have a dedicated set of playlists that talk about machine learning. Here you have videos on machine learning, how machine learning is different from deep learning and artificial intelligence, machine learning with Python, k-means clustering, decision trees and so on. If you want to learn more, you could also go through some deep learning algorithms like convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, long short term memory networks and so on. In fact, we have a detailed playlist that talks about the concepts of deep learning. Here you can find videos on what is deep learning, TensorFlow, what is a neural network, convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks. Now after you master these algorithms, you need to learn how you can select the right algorithm for your problem. Then you need to create a good model with one or more algorithms. After which you need to keep tweaking and optimizing the model so that you can get the maximum accuracy. For further reading, you can go through GitHub where there's more than 21,000 repositories under machine learning. You can also recreate published research papers adding to your experience of working with machine learning. And now for your last step, learning machine learning frameworks. Machine learning frameworks help make the lives of developers as well as users a whole lot easier. They help remove the complex part of machine learning and make it available for everyone who wants to use it, be it developers or other users. Now let's look at the widely used machine learning frameworks. There's TensorFlow, Theano, Torch, Scikit-learn and so on. Now let's look at some of them in detail. First, let's look at TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the most widely used machine learning framework. It's used for machine learning as well as deep learning. Now it's an open source software library which performs numerical computations, which is done with the help of data flow graphs. Google Translate is one of the most popular use cases of TensorFlow. Now let's look at Theano. Theano helps you define, optimize and evaluate mathematical expressions. It was developed in the University of Montreal. Lasani, Blocks and Keras are its most popular libraries. Now let's look at Spark ML library. Now this is Apache Spark's machine learning component. It also provides libraries for machine learning which are built on top of RDTs or resilient distributed datasets. It's very good at providing iterative computation and provides very high algorithmic performance. Now let's look at Scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is able to provide a huge range of supervised as well as unsupervised algorithms for machine learning. It is built on existing libraries like NumPy, SciPy and Matplotlib. Scikit-learn actually started off as a Google Summer of Code project and now has 23,000 GitHub commits. And that's it. Congratulations, you're now a machine learning engineer. Now let's look at the job opportunities in machine learning. Now if you have a look at this graph, it kind of speaks for itself. Before 2015, machine learning was much less popular than big data and cloud computing. But all of that suddenly changed. And right now, a machine learning engineer earns around $114,000 per annum. And this is a clear indication that organizations are ready to invest heavily in people who are skilled in the concepts of machine learning. You can also make the learning process easier by using Simply Learn's machine learning certification. Simply Learn's machine learning certification course provides 36 hours of instructor led training, provides 25 plus hands on exercises, gives you practical applications of 15 plus machine learning algorithms, and helps you master the concepts of supervised and unsupervised learning. It also introduces you to artificial intelligence, tells you the techniques of machine learning, data processing, regression, classification, and so much more. So if you want to take your first step to getting certified and getting ahead, click on the top right corner immediately. And with that, we've reached the end of another video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.